Good morning, Wolfpack. My name is Eric Webb, NCSU Weather Center. Let's look at this week's upcoming headlines. And we'll start off with uh, spring like warmth here across the Carolinas the next couple of days. Uh, unsettled weather returning to the middle part of the week. And of course, we can talk a little bit about uh, potentially another El Nino trying to come on over the next year. I know people have gotten sick and tired of hearing it about the last few years. Unfortunately, maybe coming back once again. So, taking a look at the current satellite picture across the Carolinas, partly to mostly sunny skies dominating the picture. We can see off to our south and west area of showers and thunderstorms developing over the central Gulf Coast. We'll move our way. Uh, during the overnight tonight, bring us a few showers and even a few thunderstorms uh, during the overnight. Um, but this uh, won't have too serious an impact, won't have any tornadoes or anything like that. So again, just something to keep an eye on. And of course, if you're uh, looking at the broader picture here, you can see this brought up a little trough centered right over the central Gulf Coast, bringing again some shower storms, even some severe weather. There's been a few tornado warnings down here today. Um, but after this goes by, temperatures are going to cool off a little bit. We're going to be a little bit more tranquil for Wednesday. And then another storm you can see right back here over the Rockies. This is going to come in our direction as we go in toward the middle part of the week and bring us more unsettled weather. So take a look at the class by class forecast. Temperatures starting out around 61 or so in the afternoon in the morning. And then we're going to warm up to around 70 or so uh, as we go through the course of the afternoon with partly to most of the sunny skies uh, during the day. So looking at climate point here, back in the state 1980, a pretty large winter storm struck North Carolina, uh, producing as much as four six inches inches of snow from the triangle area south and east. And then, of course, a much of a foot of snow up here uh, in northeastern North Carolina. This, of course, uh, occurred within about three weeks ago. We had another winter storm, uh, which would dump over two feet of snow in this part of North Carolina. So it was a very uh, healthy winter snow-wise up in that part of the state. Take a look at the current uh, global uh, satellite picture. And this is uh, what this is showing you are areas of rising uh, motion in green and sinking motion in the brown. And so it is essentially velocity potential. So what you're looking at here, I want to pay attention to is this area just north of Australia. This is associated with a large area of showers and thunderstorms. Uh, and noted in the uh, brighter colors you can see on the satellite picture. And this is indicative of what we call an MGO pulse, which is an, a very large, slowly eastward moving area of convective uh, area of showers and storms. And this can affect uh, mid latitude circulation patterns and eventually, and potentially even uh, El Nino. So take a look here at the general diagram of what an MGO pulse is. It's just generally, if you really simplify it down uh, to its basic components, it's simply a large area connected to the showers and thunderstorms with uh, lower level uh, easterlies out ahead of it, westerlies to the north, and of course divergence of loft. Um, and this happens at a very large scale, and it moves toward the east. And this can affect uh, on the El Nino Southern Oscillation because as this convective complex moves toward the Pacific, what can happen is these westerly winds behind it can slow down the trade winds and cause the formation of uh, downwelling oceanic cowboys. So that's something to keep an eye on, of course. This um, MGO pulse was kicked off in part due to a stratospheric warming event. You can see these, all these red colors here, indicative of a lot of warmth across the Arctic. What, what happens is, if you go back to the previous slide here, you can see this is the Brewer Dobson circulation, uh, if, you're, uh, if you're unaware of it. What this does is it essentially uh, emit a, a, just a general cycle of the transport of ozone and a lot of other chemicals uh, in, of course, just the general circulation pattern in the stratosphere. And this goes all the way from the tropics all the way to the poles, and it's a single cell circulation. So what happened here, in this case, is if we go forward, you can see this warming here in the poles is indicative of a lot of sinking and compression in the uh, Arctic. And what happened as a result of that is this forced ascent here near the tropical tropopause and near the lower stratosphere. This cooled the air up here, and this caused instability, of course. If you cool the air up here and you have it warmer down toward the surface, you're going to get rising air, air, and that caused a lot of thunderstorms. And this is what helped to kickstart the MGO pulse. And you can actually see it now. This is the RMM diagram showing you the MGO now entering the western Pacific. And it's going to go toward the western hemisphere of the coming days. And often what happens uh, during these kind of events is we tend to get high latitude blocking as the MGO propagates from the western Pacific into the western hemisphere. And uh, it tends to get a little bit cooler uh, around here. And chances for snow, of course, obviously go up, especially as you get toward 8 and 1 and even 2. So taking a look now at the subsurface temperature anomalies. Now I mentioned that NGO can affect ENSO, right? Well, taking a look here at these anomalies, you can see this is actually a, uh, indicative of a uh, very suppressed thermocline out here. The thermocline is essentially a very large vertical temperature gradient in the upper layer of the ocean. And what you're looking at here, again, is the vertical uh, temperature anomalies with depth. So we actually have a lot of buoys there on the equator that measure this. And what we're seeing here is a, a large warm anomaly sitting just underneath the international dateline. And this is before the MGO is even 
uh, developed. And so this is telling us that the warm pool here, this is typically off in the West Pacific, is a little bit more displaced than usual. And any little event such as the MGO could be enough to kickstart another El Nino event. So that's something to keep in mind. And if you look here at the MGO, of course, it's going toward phase eight for the next week or two. Uh, it leads to, a lot, again, a lot of high latitude blocking over the northern uh, Atlantic and a big trough in the east. You can exactly see that's a, what we have here on the GFS ensemble, pretty much a carbon copy of this previous slide. So taking a look, of course, now at the uh, upcoming uh, next few days, so you can see this cold front here off toward the west, and this batch of showers and storms mentioned earlier, the central Gulf Coast is moving toward our north. And this will cross the area overnight, but this frontal battery is going to stall, and another wave of low pressure is going to develop along that from, that's coming out of the Rockies now. That will move toward the north and east, and it will eventually go up through the northeast and produce a big snowstorm up here in the mid-Atlantic and northeastern United States. Um, and, but after that, will turn much cooler, uh, at least for a day or two, before things warm up once again. So taking a look again at the forecast for today, high temperatures around 70 degrees, partly sunny, and very mild, much warmer than normal for this time of year with winds out of the southwest at 5 to 10 miles an hour. Back to thunderstorms, it's off toward the Gulf Coast. We'll move our way overnight tonight, bringing showers uh, at least early on. And then, of course, as you go into tomorrow, uh, showers early on in the day, but seasonable uh, temperatures. And, of course, the sun will probably come back out here late in the afternoon and evening with temperatures uh, close to normal for this time of year, around 54 degrees. Take a look at the weekly uh, planner here. And, again, a, sh a few showers and storms possible on Thursday. Uh, but most of that should clear out later in the afternoon. We should see sunny skies returning. And then, of course, much cooler for Friday. And then warming right back up as you go into the weekend with highs in the 60s and 70s. And again, as we go beyond that, uh, temperatures are going to be turning much cooler as you see a big trough of uh, uh, area of low pressure uh, develop over the, uh, the Canadian Maritimes, northeastern United States, bringing a lot of cool air. And this pattern overall is pretty conducive for some sort of winter storm. Uh, in that area of the country. So something to keep in mind here as we go toward uh, the middle of the half of February. And you can see the three to week three to four temperature outlook from CBC. I don't necessarily agree with this. I think it'll be a lot, lot cooler um, near to perhaps even below normal here in the eastern United States. But I do agree with this precipitation forecast, is, which is more typical of an El Nino with above normal precip in the southwest and southeastern United States.